Okay, so welcome to this uh, uh, webinar uh, promoted by Informatics Europe and uh, I am very happy to present our speaker Stefano Ceri from Politecnico di Milano. He is going to uh, present his work on uh, storing and analyzing viral sequences through data-driven genomic computing and uh, the subtitle uh, is uh, uh, quite interesting because he is going to uh, explain us some things about uh, uh, COVID-19. So, uh, please, Stefano. And I am going to give... Okay. Uh, so, I guess it's all right. Thank you, Elisabetta, for this invitation, this nice introduction. It's really a pleasure to be here, finally, also with uh, some uh, audience, in addition to the uh, remote audience, in presence. It's a very nice uh, sensation to be back, sort of normal. And uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is uh, essentially uh, our work in the last year after the pandemics. Uh, this title uh, is, uh, well, similar to the one that has been shown before, uh, was inspired by a, a paper that we delivered a long time ago with Letizia Tanka and Georg Gottlob on Datalog, which was quite successful. And uh, we, we named that uh, what you always wanted to know about Datalog. In this case, we talk about viral sequences. I start uh, with a premise. My interest in uh, genomics probably is due to this uh, uh, curve of the cost of sequences in the genome, which actually starts in the beginning of the century when the, the first genome was, uh, human genome was uh, sequ sequenced. It's a uh, very famous uh, uh, and, very, and very cooperative project uh, involving many countries, many laboratories, and so on. And uh, you may see that from, from this uh, slope, uh, that at some point there was uh, a change, a dramatic drop. This is called next generation sequencing technology and has, has essentially uh, given a boost in the activities of uh, uh, genomics, including, thank you very much. What could I do without Anna? I don't know. Thank you. Huh? Uh, a boost in, in all the activities has to do with uh, uh, human genomics. And more or less at this time, I started to be interested in, in the, about 10 years ago. Thanks to a, a connection with uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, Yeo, uh, and particularly Professor Pellicci, who once uh, invited uh, a, gr a group of uh, professors from Politecnico, was uh, going with the uh, uh, rector Azzone, with uh, Donatella Asciuto, with uh, uh, Secchi, and we decided that it was worthwhile to try to get involved into this. The genome looks like a, a huge amount of information. The same amount of information that is in the genome is also in the uh, uh, Britannic Encyclopedia. And I, and I portray it in, in Chinese because I don't understand Chinese. Similarly, we don't understand the genome very well. It's a, a challenge for computer scientists. It is like uh, when uh, uh, Alan Turing had to dis decipher the Enigma code. It's much more complicated than the Enigma code, but we have also much more uh, powerful computing uh, facilities at this time. And I was uh, actually involved, I uh, was lucky to get uh, a, a, an ERC grant, uh, which, uh, as you know, is very rich and also very long. It started in September uh, 2016 and just finished. So it, this is my first seminar after the end of JECO. JECO, we proposed it as a radical change in data management abstraction, trying to be broader and simpler compared to what was available before. I think we had some results, a, a language for big data management, an integrated repository, a search system, demonstration, and we have an ongoing project which I will briefly mention about a system called JECO Agile. But, at some point, uh, SARS-CoV-2, I mean, uh, the uh, COVID-19, came out. 
Here is a, a diagram that shows that uh, there was uh, essentially a, a growth in the, in the publication about other, uh, let's say, comparable uh, virus, viral disease such as HIV, influenza, and so on. At some point, uh, SARS-CoV-2 came out and we had a huge amount of, of growth. Uh, this diagram was uh, in, a, in, a, in a commentary that, by the way, was complaining that we don't look into the rest of the, of the research that will be required. But, if you, but since that time, we have uh, over 500,000 scholarly articles about uh, SARS-CoV-2. So it's a huge amount. It's a huge amount of complication. Quite, quite, la quite luckily for us, it's uh, much less information. The human genome is uh, 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 3 billion uh, DNA nucleotide, a viral genome is uh, about 30,000 RNA nucleotides. For, so for us, uh, we call it big data, but it is a much uh, enormous reduction in the number, uh, in, the, in, the, in the numbers. So essentially, we repeated the approach that we had uh, worked on on the human genomes at the viral level. What we did uh, is uh, one goal, having data-driven uh, attraction system, one approach, which means uh, modeling, integrating, and then building databases and providing search systems, and two domains, the domain of human genomics and the domains of, of uh, viral sequences. This is where I will spend the next uh, 20 minutes. So I want you to be on the same page because I want you to explain exactly the meaning of this uh, small knowledge base. Uh, and we go I will do it little by little. I hope you will be able to understand it as, as, as I go. So I start uh, by discussing the structure of uh, uh, the, the viral genome of SARS-CoV-2. So it is uh, an RNA virus similar to SARS, influenza, MERS, similar to uh, dengue, Ebola. I want to quote uh, what uh, uh, Kwame said in 2012. He said, uh, the grand tendency of the future, the big one, which the virologists were expecting, will, will be carried by a modified SARS virus, similar to influenza, highly infected before symptoms, which will move from one city to the next on planes, acting as the angels of death. This was written in 2012. So this guy had a very clear vision on what uh, was uh, a possible, uh, uh, say, danger for, for humanity. This is the structure of the genome. It's, uh, as you see, it's uh, just uh, 30,000 uh, uh, um, bases uh, encoded by the, the letter G, U, A, and, e, a and C, which uh, uh, essentially for us uh, is like a pinot. It's very small compared to the human genome. And you see that uh, it can be broken down at the level of protein with only four structural proteins, spike, E, M, and S, about 16 non-structural proteins, and other, let's say, accessory proteins. So it is relatively simple from the point of view of the analysis. You think that, for instance, the human genome has 20,000 genes. Huh? Uh, the most important uh, protein, the one that everybody speaks about, is spike. Why is it? Well, essentially because you see it from the diagram below, it is on the surface. So it is the one by means of which uh, SARS-CoV-2 comes in touch with the human host. Huh? And you see, incidentally, that it is divided into two parts by this uh, S1, S2 separator. And the two parts which are mostly at outside are called RDB, receptor binding domain, and NTD, N-terminal domain. These are the most uh, dangerous areas from the point of view of uh, attracting mutations, because if a mutation happens to be here, it is very dangerous for what concerns the possible uh, effects on uh, a lot of things. Huh? So we look into the entire, uh, uh, say, set of proteins, but we really are concerned into those particular areas of the spike uh, Protein. Okay, and then we go, go to look into position of interest. So what is a position of interest? Well, it's a position where we have a mutation. How do, the, do we describe a mutation? It's essentially going from one letter 
in a given position to another letter. If we stay at the level of nucleotypes, we say, for instance, this is a very famous mutation that has been acquired by almost all the sequences very soon, A to G in this particular position which actually happens to be also at the protein level. You have seen that we have two levels, the level of nucleotypes and the level of protein. So this happens to be on the spike. At this point, we have uh, smaller numbers because the spike is a smaller portion. And uh, different letters, it, is, uh, it goes from D to G. Huh? And uh, this is a particular, uh, uh, again, change in uh, uh, the so-called so so amino acid change. The amino acid changes are the ones which are most relevant because they impact the protein function. And uh, their effect depends on uh, the substitution that they carry, uh, the position in the protein, and possibly the co-occurrence with other changes because uh, if the changes combine, they can do more, uh, they can have uh, combined efforts. Okay. Just to make an anticipation, and uh, let me also do what I plan, to take away my jacket. Okay, for instance, uh, uh, I, I already mentioned this is an, a, a dangerous area. Well, why we are worried about it? Uh, well, there is a mutation uh, on, on the Delta uh, variant, which falls in this specific area. You see here, there is a diagram that shows mutation. Here there is a, it is a, a map of the uh, spike. Here you see the area which is called RDB. And the fact that these two uh, points, uh, these two, two positions happen to be exactly on RDB is dangerous. And similarly here, you see NTD, you see two areas which are uh, uh, known, again, known to have uh, potentially uh, uh, effects on, uh, on, uh, on, on the behavior of the virus. And here we see some, some mutation. So the mutation which are most dangerous are the one that happen to be in the critical position of the, uh, in particular of the spike, but in general of the virus. Okay, which brings us to the notion of a variant. So what is the variant? First of all, you see here a number of uh, bodies with described uh, va variants. The variants are the things that we, which we are, we are playing with. Huh? Uh, a variant is essentially a collection of uh, sequences. Here you see a big, uh, uh, a phylogenetic tree, uh, which is tracing uh, from the beginning uh, when uh, Wuhan uh, virus was first uh, sequenced. Every point uh, is a sequence here. And you see that after a given point, uh, sequences start to become uh, colored depending on the particular uh, variant to which they belong. So, uh, and the variants are named uh, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, these names have been assigned uh, recently. Eh? So you see that uh, the phylogenetic tree at some point reveals a common part, and this is uh, important to, to, to determine that there is a variant. Uh, variants are uh, uh, particularly interesting when they are associated to uh, uh, risks. And uh, there are several organizations which uh, define the risks. So uh, the World Health Organization defines uh, variants of interest, or variants of concern. The US Center of Disease Control defines uh, variants of interest, variants of concern, and variants of high consequence, which luckily we don't have yet. Also, the variants are named from, by, by different organizations in different ways. So for instance, uh, typically the name is assigned by GZAID, by Pangolin, by Next Train. Pangolin is perhaps the most uh, relevant organization to give names. So the B117 lineage, is similar to the UK variant, it's the same as the UK variant, it's the same as alpha. And, and uh, the World Health Organization at some point said, okay, let's give uh, a name which is more mnemonic and also doesn't characterize the specific place where a variant was born, they call it alpha, beta, gamma, and so on. Here you see a table that is uh, representing the names, uh, the lineages, the clades, uh, the disease, next strain. So there is a, a, a big potential for data integration because this is the same data with different naming, with different uh, uh, information, possibly with uh, conflicts in, in indications. What is the, the context that we assign to a, uh, to a variant? It is the mutations that accumulate in a variant. 
the, that part of the phylogenetic tree which is in common. So, for instance, the alpha variant has uh, a, a, this about 20 mutation. As I said, when the mutation come together, they have an effect uh, which is more than the single mutation. So a variant, and how do we define these, these, these numbers? Well, we take, uh, again, a statistical approach. We look at the, those mutations which are present in at least 75% of the, of the sequences which are classified as alpha. So, given a context to a, to a, to a uh, variant, essentially says, means to associate it to a given uh, set of mutations. This mutation actually changes, uh, if you look at all the variants in the world which have appeared, and this, uh, this is a, a logistic uh, uh, curve. We, have, we see a start which is uh, exponential and then it goes up to the point where the variants become dominant. And this mutation can change altogether. So that we actually have uh, fi finally a, a result uh, uh, with a paper which is coming out, which essentially, just by looking at the, the shape of this, of this uh, 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 mutations, can figure out uh, that the variant is, 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 uh, is uh, um, let's say, uh, is, is, is coming out. Huh? And it can do it uh, without even knowing anything else. This is the, uh, how the Delta variant has become predominant. Huh? So now everyone more or less deals with the Delta variant. Uh, now we know what the variants are. Let's talk about the effects. So the effects, uh, first of all, uh, they are monitored uh, by certain organization. They, their evidence comes from the various uh, papers, but as I said, there are a huge number of papers. And the effects uh, have to do with uh, 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 either uh, related to a variant or to a single change or to a group of changes. Huh? And uh, uh, most of the interesting uh, effects are on the spike protein or on the, uh, inside the spike protein, uh, relational binding domain or unterminal domain as I said already. What are the effects? Well, we have been talking about this uh, for, the entire, for the last uh, year, essentially. The effects are uh, either uh, um, uh, adding uh, viral transmission, the capability to pass from a host to another host. Once it is passed, uh, it is not clear whether the, the virus will infect the host. So infectivity is a, is a subtle difference from transmission. And once it is infected, you might have a disease which is more severe based on the kind of uh, mutation. And some of the mutation might, uh, could be associated with a higher fatality rate. Quite luckily, this is, doesn't happen very often. But uh, there are ca cases which have been observed, and there are papers which describe these uh, cases. Uh, the other effects of amino acid changes have to do with immunology. Uh, essentially, if you have uh, 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 certain changes, can, uh, for instance, reduce the sensitivity to, con to the sera of the convalescent people, huh? the sera that you get from vaccinated for a recovered or vaccinated individual. Some uh, can reduce the activity of uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies, antibodies. And again, this is a potential care for the future. And some other can uh, uh, to, uh, essentially uh, influence the connection between uh, the, this uh, position, which again is our famous uh, 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 spike protein, and uh, ACE2, which is a receptor in the host, in the human, which is responsible for the, for the infectivity and also with uh, uh, other, other aspects. And uh, uh, other effects uh, can be on protein dynamics and, and protein kinetics. This is a, a presentation of uh, the alpha variant from this perspective. We have the usual 22 changes. So this, uh, this change is uh, associated with fire infectivity. This change is uh, associated with fire transmission. These two changes are associated with uh, even higher transmission. Uh, the entire alpha variant is associated with higher severity, higher transmission, and so on. And these are the papers which describe each of these uh, effects. Huh? Now, if you look in the Delta variant, the Delta variant has more changes. 
So another aspect about uh, the variants is that they accumulate more changes and then become more powerful. And uh, also in this case, higher transmission, higher binding of affi uh, uh, affinity, lower sensitivity co to color relations theory. Uh, and uh, in general, so these are factors, as you see, are connected either to the individual change or to the group of changes or to the variant as a whole. And incidentally, we have to talk to, to thank uh, uh, also one of the PhD students, Ruba Kalaf, which is a, a, a coming, has a biological background, has been working a lot on, on uh, understanding this, uh, this uh, effect. Here are the various... Uh, uh, there is a minor point here, that uh, if you just look at the change, the change itself uh, might have... Uh, uh, but it's a particular change from one, uh, uh, say, amino acid to another. So just by looking at this particular change, you might have a, an effect which is uh, specific to, the, to, the, to the, this case. So if you change uh, between two uh, uh, amino acids which are very similar, probably it is not going to, to do a, a, a disastrous change because uh, the effect will also be minimal. Uh, this was the knowledge, and now I turn to the data. The data is uh, either organized uh, by sequence or organized by another, another element, which, which is called epitope, sequences. Sequences are collected uh, worldwide from laboratories. Uh, there are three laboratories from which we get the data. One is the uh, gene bank, fully open, and uh, it is the, the, the position is worldwide. COG-UK is for the UK, because UK is, uh, is, uh, is uh, extremely uh, advanced in, the, in the everything which has to do with uh, viral depositions. And then GISAID, which is a worldwide organization which uh, provides us uh, the data. It is an open data, but it is uh, protected and uh, essentially allows uh, access uh, to registered users. So you know, it's not as open as uh, GeneBank, but uh, it has been very cooperative with us and we have uh, a full, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, dump of GSA data every 15 minutes, which is ex excellent from our point of view. Uh, the, the data are deposited in, in FASTA, uh, which is a format uh, for RNA sequence. And typically what happens is that uh, the, organiza and the organization makes, uh, 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 in particular, GTA makes uh, 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 say a pipeline to organize uh, the uh, extraction of amino acid changes, which is the format that they give to us. Uh, in addition, there are relevant metadata with the uh, information, the collection date when uh, this was uh, uh, collected uh, on the host, on the human, the deposition date, to the database, the deposition lab, the location where this happened, which is uh, we subdividing continent, country, region, and subregion, and the lineage, which is uh, done according to Pangolin. This is an, uh, a description of how it has been growing. Uh, the numbers now are, we have a total of 3.5 billion, uh, a million uh, sequences on our lab, on our database, which is stored here at the Polytechnic. And you see that has been grown, growing uh, significantly. These are the, the, the number of depositions relative to the, to the cases. You see that the UK has uh, not the largest number of depositions, but the largest relative to the number of uh, cases. Huh? You see that there are some countries that do very well, including uh, Germany, Denmark, and Sweden. We do relatively well. We are there in this position. A question for you. Which region do you think is uh, the one that gives more uh, uh, sequences to these databases? You can guess. Okay, if nobody guesses, uh, you can think about it. Uh, well, uh, oh, there is just another, another point. That the, 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 it is critical, the delay between the collection date and the sequence deposition. So for instance, in Iceland, which is a small country, in 12 days, they, the sequence uh, is deposited. And uh, in Italy, it takes an uh, order of uh, 25 days. So it is uh, a relatively long time. If it could be shortened, shorten it would be much better because it would allow us uh, to do a control which is uh, to the time of uh, deposition. Huh? 
And this just shows that uh, remarkably that all the sequences that were uh, uh, produced in, uh, in one year were then produced more or less in one month. So it has is, it is, it is been growing in 2021. And as I said, it is uh, relatively uh, uneven. What is very surprising is that in Italy, the, 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 the region which is giving more sequences is Campania, perhaps due to the politi politics of uh, the governor, uh, Luca, who really wanted the, the sequences to be deposited. So, and there is a call to, our, to the, all, the other, all the other regions and also to Lombardy to do at least as good as Campania. And uh, another uh, surprising thing is that in, in the U.S. is Wyoming. So who would think that Wyoming is so good in, uh, in depositing sequences? So uh, there are strange events that occur in, in, in several regions that may cause, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the timeliness of uh, deposition. Okay, and finally, epitopes. Epitopes are particular areas uh, that are used uh, in order to build vaccines. So, because they are uh, recognized by antibodies and they can prov provoke immune response. So, uh, in particular, we are interested in, in the epitopes uh, uh, which uh, belong to the spike protein because it's the one which is heavily used by the vaccine. And the good news is that, uh, uh, what, for what we know from Pfizer and Moderna, which have deposited, uh, which uh, their, their sequence was somehow understood uh, on, on a particular paper. Uh, they use all, all the, the possible uh, uh, epitopes on the spike. That means that essentially uh, we are relatively safe because all what they could use, they use. And uh, even if we, we lose one, two, three, five epitopes, it's not so bad. And this is why it is reducing, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, ability uh, to, uh, uh, let's say, react uh, uh, the, the, the various uh, things that, uh, uh, that uh, are reduced in the vaccine people compared to the, to the, to the uh, non-vaccine people, but they are just reduced, they are not uh, eliminated. For instance, there is a paper that says, well, if there is this particular sequence of changes in the E protein, this uh, would uh, generate an immune escape. So what we have to do is to pray this changes should not be in the next uh, variant, because that's uh, essentially a key to make uh, the, the population safer from the, from, from the vaccination point of view. Okay, so you have seen all the data and I am at uh, more or less half of my talk. I have, understanding the data is my first uh, goal and has been covered. Then uh, we talk about ourselves, what we did. First of all, uh, we uh, had to learn because we had no information whatsoever about uh, SARS-CoV-2 when we started in March 2020. So what did we do? Well, essentially we interviewed a number of people. It has been ex exciting because we went uh, out and talked to all these people who have been uh, nice in talking to us uh, and uh, widening our understanding uh, step by step. We talked to clinicians, uh, we talked to pathologists, uh, we talked to uh, veterinarians and vi virology. I like to mention Ilaria Kappa because she has been uh, instrumental because through her, we had a number of additional contacts. And also we have an ASP project, uh, Y Lombardy, together with Ilaria, which is an interesting project which is about to close and we'll have a nice result to show. We talked to molecular biologists, we talked to epidemiologists. I see Renato here in the room. <laughs> We talk to people in the private sector to understand how the private sector moves. And uh, one interesting talk with was this uh, Seven Tsui who is the, in Hong Kong because he was the guy who was uh, heavily involved in SARS. And he was, uh, let's say, one of the people who managed to contain SARS in Hong Kong without uh, having it spread to the whole world. And this we used for doing our systems and our, and our studies. And we did a huge number of studies out of this context. And I'm, I'm going to talk to you about these studies. The first study we did is to understand the data from a conceptual point of view. So we are database people, and we try to understand uh, essentially how to model the data. And there is what we call the variant conceptual model. I will just give you a quick uh, view of it. Essentially, we, we model the sequence, 
as a center of gravity. Around the sequence, we see uh, the host and, and the virus. And then we look at the sequencing proje project which has produced the, uh, this sequence. We look at the kind of experimental technology which has been used. And finally, we look at the uh, annotations and therefore the variants, both at the nucleotide level and an amino acid level. And uh, this is what we have to rebuild ourselves if we are given the faster sequence. Uh, the rest uh, is what we can read uh, from uh, the metadata. So this is work, this work is uh, data integration, trying to understand uh, what is common in the various sources and to come with uh, a, a joint uh, model. Incidentally, we were also involved in another quote-unquote ethical study because uh, we worked in, uh, in a, um, uh, an effort which uh, was uh, uh, essentially uh, trying to understand uh, the, the, the symptoms of the of, uh, COVID-19 patients. And this uh, was a database that uh, we, we jointly uh, designed together with, um, I don't know, 50 or so people on, on, on a network. Uh, uh, this network was the uh, uh, network for uh, uh, this uh, study, which actually has been uh, eventually published on Nature. Uh, the host of genetics initiative. We, were, we are few of the 1,000 or so authors, so we have a, a small participation in this, but we worked essentially on uh, understanding the data. And we had the first freeze uh, of the dictionary and the second freeze of the dictionary. Then uh, we developed tools. The tools are called VirusServe, VirusWitz, EpiServe, VirusLab, VirusClast, and cov 2 k Okay, these are six uh, tools uh, which are now available, more or less, uh, maybe with the exception of the last one, which is still in progress, and uh, can be used by the scientific community. Uh, our data integration pipeline essentially does the following. We get the data from the sources. Uh, actually, we, we, this work is not just uh, for SARS-CoV-2 because it also works for other species. Then we understand uh, and, con and build the content. We do the data curation pipeline, which means uh, standardization, cleaning, metrics, uh, also overlaps because these, these uh, sequences are, say, deposited sometime twice. Then uh, uh, GZAID uh, forces us not to combine the data. They want to have control, which is good. So we have a, a database on GZAID and a database on the rest of the world, which means the King Bank of UK and the Chinese database. And then we built uh, our tools uh, in terms which have the same structure, even if there are two uh, systems, one is market design and the other one is not market design, but they are the same, let's say, basic organization. Uh, just to give you an, an, an idea, this is the conceptual schema. From the conceptual schema, we, we mapped uh, some of the uh, metadata uh, that are in our tool, which now are, are a sort of, uh, uh, let's say, um, relatively user-friendly uh, 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 web-based web uh, search system. You can put the information in, in the search system. This is about uh, the metadata. This is about uh, the, 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 the variants. You can ask about the combination of variants in various conditions, and, and eventually you get answers. Huh? And, and this first tool that we published on uh, uh, NAR which incidentally is a very good journal, uh, just produces results. This is the indication of the uh, fact that indeed, uh, first of all, there is some, uh, uh, let's say, overlap in the sequences, and second, the numbers are growing exponentially. Well, are growing. I, I don't, don't say how the, the, the order of magnitude, but they are really big. Uh, if you go to this tool and you just go and click on any, any, any position, it gives you a menu with all the, all the counts. So even, even just going and, and doing the counts will give you how many, how many sequences are there. Uh, what we can do with this tool is to replicate uh, research results. So for instance, there was a research and uh, information about this uh, mutation infecting uh, more likely uh, be, being uh, inf infectious, and uh, we looked into the data, and we, we, we saw that it was growing. That 
essentially it was going from uh, before uh, uh, March uh, 2020 uh, and after March 2020, we had different uh, proportions. So it is there, it is a query, you can repeat it any time. Then we worked on uh, making this more visual. So we worked on uh, having uh, a, a tool which is called Virus Vits, which is uh, uh, again published on R. And for instance, we can show things like this. This is a very visual example that shows that after summer, the Italians came back from their trips and they accumulated a lot of mutation. So it is nice to see that uh, it can visually see the, effect, the impact of traveling. Huh? This is another one which shows uh, that uh, a given mutation that was only in Spain after summer came to Italy. You see, uh, 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 Spain before, Spain after, Italy before, Italy after. This was the famous uh, mutation that went uh, from humans to minks uh, and, and then, then to humans. This has caused uh, the killing of uh, several million minks in Denmark, which by the way, probably was exaggerated because uh, in the end, uh, they, they, uh, they were fearing that the mutation could, uh, could uh, be important, but uh, now we have so many other mutations that that particular one is probably not so important. Uh, this is the growth uh, of uh, the various variants. You see that this uh, uh, thing that I show you go from 0 to 4 to 13 to 17 percent. It is in the alpha variant, but it is also in the epsilon variant, which is the Californian variant. This growth systematic of the mutation in the various variants. Epsilon variant is the one which has been uh, generated in California. It is also in the South African variant. Uh, again, the same uh, regular growth. So, interesting to see. Huh? And then we work on EpiSurf. EpiSurf is combining uh, GeneBank and uh, what is called the IEDB database. Uh, so we can combine together uh, data about uh, uh, the, the, the population and then data about the epitopes and find out where mutation for. And, and for instance, uh, this is what we have seen already. This diagram that I showed you before is done by the intersection of epitopes and, uh, 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 NTD and, 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 and mutations. Uh, we also had uh, funding from AIT, and what we did in this case was to develop a system which was reusing the public uh, 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 say, software but in a way in which this software could be also, uh, let's say, um, separately uh, owned and uh, controlled by an organization. So we developed a system which is called the Virus Lab, which is actually now under the, say, the um, control of a company which is called Quantia Consulting, which is based in, in, in Milano. And uh, we also had the collaboration for this part of Delft University for some of the service-oriented uh, implementation. Finally, uh, and this is the last thing I'm going to show, is the, I want you to play a little bit with the tools and do a little bit, the, like we were saying, the piccolo chemical, little chem 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 chemical, in this case, a little data analyst. So in particular, I want you to, to study a little bit uh, delta, the property of delta. We know that uh, there is a little bit of a possibility of uh, ability to escape to immune response. So why? And what can we say about uh, Delta? So we, for this, we used uh, our last uh, tool, which is called ViroClast, which allows to do, uh, uh, um, let's say, studies on uh, uh, lineage analysis, temporal analysis, spatial analysis, and open analysis. So these studies are essentially doing, taking a quantitative aspect of the virus. So it has a very user-friendly interface. So you can, for instance, say, I want to compare India versus the rest, uh, the rest of Asia in terms of uh, the uh, mutation of a particular lineage, a particular variant. Huh? And you move around uh, the world, and uh, while you move around the world, the interface helps you. And you can uh, decide uh, what you want to show, what you don't want to show. This is a time description of the cases. Here we are monitoring India, where the Indian variant was grown, and then Asia, where the Indian variant moved. 
And, and what we see is a strange thing, that there are some mutations which were not so present in uh, India, while they became more widespread in Asia. So it means that uh, the Delta uh, variant, when it went out of uh, India, changed. Why? So we did the same against the world. Huh? And again, we find the same thing. The change is even more predominant. OK, what are the possible reasons? The first one is called the founder effect. When a mutation goes to another place, it changes because a, a, lot, a small number of people, the founders, bring their own features. The other possibility is a selection. There has been some selection that made this uh, change more uh, interesting. So while Delta was uh, changing, was also acquiring more mutations or, or, or mutation in more, in more uh, prevalence. And this was somehow giving an end. Again, we, we try to see this uh, same thing uh, doing the time analysis. And what we see is that, first of all, in Asia, yeah, there is a small, a small growth, but not significant of this uh, mutation that we are looking. These are, uh, believe me, they are the same mutations that we are seeing before. While outside, at least in Asia, we see that they grow. Eh? And uh, also, outside, if you look at the world, eh, you see that there are more mutations that, that are occurring. Because, I mean, uh, um, like uh, peop people jump on the, on, on the, on the, on the, on the wagon of the w uh, winner, right? So there are more people jumping into the, into the, into the Delta variant while the variant uh, travels in the world. Okay, but then uh, why this happened? Okay, we can compare Delta with Kappa because Delta and Kappa are very close. There is just a small change. Kappa can happen before Delta in India. So if you do that, and this is again a kind of analysis which, is, which we can support, well, essentially we see that, uh, again, uh, there is uh, uh, this, in Kappa, this, this variance were at zero. And there is also some evidence that uh, these uh, variants uh, are implicated in immune escape. So in summary, while uh, Delta moved, uh, it acquired variants which make it more powerful. Huh? Uh, and this is an interesting study which has been done with our, with our uh, tool, but uh, for what we understand, it has not been so far uh, revealed. Huh? So some conclusion about the COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, virus are like football teams. They like to get the best, best players. They like to get uh, the, the amino acid changes that would give them maximum advantage. Uh, each player brings together its effect. So there is Ronaldo. And I actually had to change uh, and say Ronaldo and Pogba because Ronaldo changed the, 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 the football team in the meanwhile. Uh, the effect depends on the genomic positions. And the changes following on spike epitopes affect the stability of, of uh, uh, epitopes and therefore vaccine efficiency. Data is very powerful, should be deposited continuously, should be quickly available on public sources because thanks to data, we can determine the dangerous changes, we can do surveillance. And uh, uh, of course the virus is changing, it's no longer the same. Uh, other steps are likely. We could even think uh, to predict the changes because uh, somehow they, we could associate some probability. There are several publications that we wrote. Uh, many of them are on uh, Journal of uh, Food Impact Factors. These are all describing the work that has been done. Uh, there are... Uh, what happened? Hmm. Okay. There are several resources that we have developed. They are all available hmm? and be tried. The, the team which has been working on this is this small team compared to Jacob because uh, after the, 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 the time when we had to go viral, we also can, couldn't work uh, as uh, widely as before. Uh, I am a data scientist, so I had the luxury of being contacted by many people and being working on other topics. So we, I worked on uh, uh, genetic models, human genetic models, 
uh, and, and uh, this has been the work joined with the University of Siena, the group of Alessandro Ranieri. Uh, I've been working on, uh, with uh, uh, Renato uh, on uh, data-driven analysis. We have been working on uh, uh, understanding vaccine, vaccine effects. We have been working with Bank of Italy on how to prevent the company uh, takeovers during turbulent time, which again didn't happen, but anyway was inspired by the COVID-19. Uh, a few words about Jekyll, because Jekyll is finished. Uh, it, uh, originally, Jekyll was a suffer and a pain. At the beginning, I was really suffering. Many papers were, were, were killed. I don't know where is Pietro. Pietro has, uh, has uh, been uh, living with me the feeling of uh, a lot of paper being killed uh, along the way, because we were not uh, expert. Uh, but uh, sooner or later, we became expert. So uh, GMQL has a lot, uh, has, is a system which has been published and can be used. GenoSurf is a system which has been published and can be used. In addition, uh, I just looked into journal paper only in the last two years. Uh, we have a, a published paper on Jekyll technology, but also on other things. So for instance, we have been working on matrix factorization and drug prediction. We have been working on the three-dimensional structure of the genome. This is, uh, I'm particularly fun of this work because uh, it was my, uh, let's say, fixation. I wanted to understand this three-dimensional structure of the genome and, and how it, it is organized. We spent, uh, this started in, uh, back in 86, uh, and uh, in, sorry, in, in 2016. And after four years, we finally had uh, very good results. And this was the thesis of Luca Nanni, a very, a very strong student that joined the group. And then we have been working on, on cancer, again related to, to three-dimensional three structure uh, uh, or with uh, syntactic lethality. We have been working on epigenetics. So we have gone a long way in, in understanding biology. And this is the group at large. Huh? And incidentally, uh, Wahid is now at the Broad Institute. Uh, uh, Abdo is at, at U Berlin. Stefano is at NUS Singapore. Gaia is at the Supercomputing Center Barcelona. Luca is in the UNI, University of Lausanne. So all the students, these students make a career in uh, genomics. The other students make a career in uh, data science. So they are all uh, employed somewhere. And this is the current uh, setting of JECO at the world. And then we have another spin-off, which is JECO Agent, in which Frank is working. Uh, we are uh, essentially working on uh, trying to get uh, a multimodal tool for facilitating the use of genomic data uh, or, or genomic and data science with a conversational agent. And uh, we are uh, directly addressing the genomic aspect, trying to reduce the, the distance to the genomic aspect to zero by using uh, uh, multimodal conversation and particularly dialogue. And we already have some good results and we have uh, coming up with a proposal for a proof of concept. And this is the Jekko Agent team. So altogether, a lot of work. There are three people that I really want to thank, which are Anna, Arif, and Pietro. So Anna, first of all, is the boss. So she decides what we have to do. Yeah? We have to acknowledge that. And she is the expert in uh, essentially everything which has to do with uh, understanding the domain, uh, uh, say, make, building models, and so on. Arif is, the, is essentially the uh, system person, so he's been building the systems that you have seen around. And Pietro is the method person, is the person who has been building the uh, methods that uh, have been, uh, been used. And by combining these three capabilities, I was relatively safe. And this is it. Uh, it's, uh, I think I still have uh, 10 minutes maybe, because we started 10 minutes later, for questions. That's it. That's my end. Thank you. So I don't know if we want to take questions from here, from the chat. In which case, uh, I, we... Oh, question from the audience. I, we have the microphone. 
Di bagian sini. Kan enggak? Everybody shy? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Stefan, for for very um, exciting and, and inspiring uh, talk. Now, my question was about bugs uh, because uh, I mean, it's a it's a monodimensional variable, or you have multiple definer variant because you mentioned few of them. I was expected to have many more. Uh, well, a variant is defined by the people who do phylogenetics. So they know exactly what the variant is. And uh, all the sequences uh, that uh, exist of the virus are phylogenetically assigned to a lineage. And the lineages sometimes are called the variant in this uh, informal terminology. Right? So it is informal. Informally, we say this is a variant because a lineage which has become predominant, because it is, it is monitored, because it has some uh, possible side effects. So we talk about variants for those lineages which are more important than others. Yeah? So it's, it's a relative concept. Yeah? This is what the people typically talk about variants. Incidentally, for instance, our politicians don't understand the difference between a variant in this, uh, let's say, understanding meaning and a variant of a single mutation, because it's also called a variant. Okay. okay, so every single mutation is a variant, okay. and then uh, the sequences collectively form a variant. So the two terms are overloaded, of course, and you have to understand from the context what, is the what, what it is. Eh? So in particular, uh, people don't understand anything. The politicians typically don't, don't know what they talk about. Also, the journalists don't know what they talk about. And they talk about variants, uh, let's say, using both terms, this was, uh, for instance, Salvini recently, because he doesn't understand the meaning. Yeah? So he said the variants uh, are generated in, uh, in uh, I mean, in, in, uh, are, 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 create, are uh, accumulate mutations. Okay, the, the vaccination accumulates mutation in given position. This was the variants at the single level. Like, true, the, the, the vaccination, uh, induce some uh, probability of uh, having variants in certain position. But he was talking about this variants and not uh, the big uh, variant such as uh, uh, everybody talks about, Delta, Alpha, and so on. Other questions? While I'm going there, I have also a quick question. But, okay. um, that is concerning uh, with the way you uh, integrate the various databases. Is the process uh, uh, automated or uh, you have to do manual work it, there? It is as automated as possible. We don't have here a Tommaso, who is the guy who is uh, doing it. He's a PhD student, fresh PhD student. And we have uh, pipelines which are essentially uh, well. We also bought uh, a system which is only for what we call production. So now we have a server, new server, only for viral stuff. Uh, it has to be a server, cannot be a cloud, because it has to store data. Eh? And uh, it, uh, our production, our pipeline runs on a, on a separate uh, system. It runs for three, four days. And, and when, when we are ready, we click a button and put it on the production server. Uh, it is mostly automated in the sense that most of the work is done automatically, but there are some checks that have to be done at the end of the process to make sure that nothing went wrong. Um, I was wondering if uh, from all the genomes sequenced of uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, can you tell if the such genome uh, looks like something genetically engineered or uh, something that uh, follows the laws of uh, natural selection, I don't know? If there is such this information. This is a good question for the experts of, uh, of uh, let's say, bi biology. From all what we hear, it has been natural selection from SARS, actually possibly to a different, to different uh, spillover. So 
we don't, I, I don't have uh, uh, the, the, the impression that this has been generated in, in the labs, but this is not our, our, our thing. It's, uh, someone else thing. I, I, I read this in, in, a, in an article recently. recently. So what we can say is that it is uh, very similar to SARS, because uh, I, as I show in, at the beginning, SARS genome and SARS-CoV-2 genome are just a little bit away, not too much. And uh, also the mechanism of spillover is the same from, from uh, say, same species. And so it's very similar. So we have no reason to believe that it has not been uh, a natural spillover. Also, the words of Queen, uh, if I, which I read, written in 2012, there is this book, Spillover, which uh, mentioned about 10 events of spillover which have occurred in the last 10 years. So it is uh, a natural, I mean, here we have a Renato that can, can uh, say much more than me, but it is a natural uh, evolution that uh, spillover events occur. Uh, spillover has generated HIV, has generated uh, dengue, has generated, uh, so they, 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 are, they are all over. Huh? And we have to be, be, become prepared. Quite luckily, there is a new initiative of the Regione Lombardia in which I am involved in order to try to become prepared for the future because I think uh, this is one event, but we cannot go in the next event with the same level of unpreparedness. Huh? So we have to be more, much more prepared for the future times. Yeah? Uh, okay. Uh, who is uh, raising the hand? I don't know how it works. So the the there is a, a hand raised, but I don't see which one is. So please feel free to uh, open your microphone because I don't see the hand. Let me the chat. Uh, I don't see any question on the chat. Stefano, may I ask ah, you a question? Okay, you can ask from, yes, of course. Good, go ahead. Ciao. Giorgio, Giorgio. Uh, it's, ah, very nice to see you. Uh, is my, there a, a foreseeable um, perspective to cross data between this um, evolution of the virus genoma and human genoma to identify groups that might uh, be differently affected, that might be um, faster multipliers of variations uh, and uh, therefore making guesses on how humanity can deal or suffer from all of this? Yeah, this is a very good question. This is also a dream that we have at, in, in, in my group because we are working on, at, at the same time on the human genome, on, on the viral genome, and also on, on, on uh, patient data. So. Of course, uh, this will be excellent uh, to be done. All the people which I worked on are very much specialized. So the people that work on the human genome, they don't sequence the genome, the, 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 the virus. The people that work on the virus, they don't sequence the genome. So it, we, we have to really find a, a point of, uh, because we need to have uh, not only the information about these two, but they have to be combined by the same host, which at the same time is the patient, which has the genome, and it also has uh, a viral uh, contamin uh, the, the, the virus. So we must find the place where such an information can be put together. And uh, it is very, once we have that, I mean, we have uh, all the tools for, for doing uh, the analysis on, on, on the three, three uh, fields, and possibly we have all the tools to do, to do a combined analysis two by two. So uh, viral, virus and host, and then uh, 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 genome, human genome, and, and host, and, and, and let's say clinical data. But we miss the three things. So if you can, uh, with your superpowers, make uh, something to happen, because uh, this would be very interesting for us. Giorgio is uh, a very good what? friend, but also a uh, 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 one of those physicists uh, that have a uh, long, uh, long, uh, let's say, a lot of influence on the, on the world of research. 
and, and very good. It, it's a typical uh, problem of uh, complexity. Complexity yes. is some of the words, magic words also among physicists. And, and uh, maybe some, uh, some intersections might, might enlighten the way uh, yeah. ahead of us. Uh, yes, complexity in human relationship also. <laughs> not only, not only. I mean, the data is relatively simple to manage. Human relations are more difficult. Yeah, uh, exchanges. There is a, there is a question. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Giorgio. I think uh, you, I think you agree, eh? of course. And uh, it's, it's clear for every one of us that the problems are of human nature. Uh, there is a question. Epitope structure is the key to understanding the effectiveness of vaccines to violence, whatever they are. Any warning of such effect could be interesting. I want to study, yes. Actually, we have a, a collaboration with uh, people uh, that uh, what we would like to do is uh, uh, build a, a variant hunter together with uh, uh, people who are actually working in uh, uh, Israel for the Israel government that have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, an, approach, uh, an, uh, an approach to... Uh, say, to, to be to building early warnings. Of course, uh, also the idea that we have of using big data goes in the direction of early warnings. And, and uh, also we have a collaboration with uh, people in Florida who have uh, phylogenetic uh, methods and they would like to use uh, the same kind of information on the small scale. So we, we are open to collaboration and we have a lot, lot of things to do. But the important thing is to deposit sequences quickly because once they are deposited, then everything can be done. So the, my main message is uh, deposit, uh, do a lot of sequence uh, uh, of, of the virus, deposit them on the public databases, and then we can do whatever we like worldwide. I can do research on uh, Bangladesh, I can, and, and anybody can do research on Lombardia. Okay. I don't know. You, you didn't want to go much further, so I think uh, we could uh, probably stop here. Thank you very much. You have been very interested, and uh, I appreciate it to give a talk in, in public. Hello. <clears throat> oh. Yes.